We're not doctors, we're not vets, we just love our fish and want to keep beautiful aquariums. But the problem is our fish can get sick just like us, just like any other animal. And even though learning about all the diseases and all the medications may seem like a daunting task, you've come to the right place. Because you guys that know me, I'm Batman. Know that here at Caveman Aquatics, I make things as simple as possible and we get straight to it. So let's go. I'm gonna start very basic and very general just in case you're here because your fish are sick right now and you just need to know right now. A quick disclaimer though for those of you that don't know I am a Seachem ambassador but this video is not gonna be about promoting only Seachem medications even though they make some of the best I'll be informing you on all the most popular effective meds that I've used in my experience fish not eating has stringy white poop and sunken belly most likely an internal parasite most common one is called hexameda mix Seachem metroplex focus and garlic guard into the food and feed it to the whole tank detailed video on that process right here Said fish still doesn't eat the medicated food? Then try some medicated flakes, like Angel Plus Anti-Protozoan Flakes, good for any type of cichlids. Still not eating? Then you'll want to remove the fish into his own hospital tank and add Metroplex directly into the water column, following the directions on the package. If after about a week to 10 days, the Metroplex has not seemed to get the fish appetite back, then your fish may have a different type of tapeworm or flatworm, so try Hikari Prazi Pro as well. That's a good idea. Both Metro and Prazi Pro can be safely used together. Alrighty then. If this still doesn't work and your fish still has sunken belly and won't eat at all, and he's just withering away, then you're gonna have to try the last resort method, which is injecting the medication directly into his stomach. That's right, full video on how to do that right there. Now maybe your fish has external problems like the most common ectoparasite called ick. If your fish has white little dots on it, this is most likely ick. Ick does not always need medication to treat if you caught it early. It can be treated by simply raising the temperature in your tank to about 88 to 90 degrees gradually of course, but some fish and some live plants may not be able to handle those higher temperatures. So make sure to do research on what you have in your tank. Raising the temperature speeds up the parasite's life cycle causing it to fall off your fish faster when it's in this free life stage not attached to the host is when it can be killed. Adding aquarium salt can also be effective at killing the egg parasite in this stage. One tablespoon per five gallons usually does the trick. There is a great, great article in my Facebook group written by the mad scientist himself, Jeff Thompson, a veteran of the hobby and a moderator of the group with step-by-step -step instructions on how to tackle egg. Check it out at facebook.com groups slash caveman aquatics. Don't worry, I'll have it linked in the description below. Once there, you can find it in the files tab. There are medications for treating ick as well, if you choose to go that route. We'll get into those meds in a bit. Okay, now that we got you guys' emergencies out of the way, let's really get into the meat and potatoes here. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. This is gonna be a long one, guys, but this video is meant to give you as much info on fish diseases and the differences in the most popular medications for each type of disease or infection, so that if you ever come across any of these, you'll know exactly what you should use or you can always refer back to this video to find out exactly what you need. I'll have timestamps for each section of this video down in the description below for easy future reference. First and foremost, the best medication any fish can get is clean fresh water, stable water parameters, and a healthy nutritional diet. By keeping up with your tank husbandry and ensuring that we keep these things as the priorities in our tanks, it'll keep our fish healthier, their immune system stronger, and keep them able to fight off anything that may come their way. Before we get into medications, I have to first say that you Using medications should always be your last resort, especially the strong stuff. All meds are reducing agents that will reduce the available oxygen in the tank and they'll add to the stress your fish is already feeling. This can be more harmful to your fish in some cases. So if we don't have to use them, we shouldn't. The only exception to this rule is going to be during the quarantine of new fish. I used to not auto medicate in the past, but I hated those times when two weeks of quarantine went by and I was ready to add my fish to the tank only to find symptoms of some kind of disease infection which caused me to have to medicate then at that point and basically start the quarantine time all over again. So the method I use now is to auto medicate but only with two very mild medications that covers it all. I call them the quarantine couple or the QC for short. I use Seachem Paragard which is only a prophylactic antiseptic not antibiotics and Seachem Metroplex which is an antibiotic but it's very very safe for all fish and very hard to overdose. Both of these will cover the vast majority of the diseases that your fish may have as soon as you get them, both internally and externally. Oh. We'll get into more details on each one later in the video. When our fish get sick, it's because they're stressed due to any number of reasons. Bad water parameters like ammonia, nitrite, and or high nitrates in the water, fluctuating pH, fluctuating temperatures, aggressive bullies in the tank, 
poor nutrition. You guys get it. By keeping a stress-free tank, we avoid dealing with many diseases to begin with. Now I know what your next question is. Trust me, I'm reading your mind right now. How do I know if my fish are stressed? Huh? Huh? Am I right or am I right or am I right? Or am I right? Well, I don't know, man. Don't worry, I got you. Some telltale signs of a stressed fish are clamped fins, keeping their fins pressed against their bodies, uh, sitting at the bottom of the tank on the substrate, hardly swimming or moving and looking lethargic, staying at the top of the tank and always gasping for air, mouth opening and closing very rapidly, and also flashing, which is when they're constantly rubbing their skin on the decor or on the substrate, basically trying to give themselves a quick little scratch, constantly hemorrhaging or twitching, and of course, any visible spots on their bodies that shouldn't be there. Now let's say you see some of these signs, we have to decide what's the best kind of treatment first. It isn't always just reach for some super strong meds and throw it in there. If the fish has torn and maybe shredded fins, Maybe he's just getting bullied. In this case, you may want to separate him into a hospital tank and just keep him in fresh, clean water and give him time to heal on his own. Seachem Stress Guard isn't necessarily a medication, but it can absolutely help in repairing those torn fins and prevent any infections while also helping to promote more slime coat production for your beat up buddy. Oh. You may also consider treating with aquarium salt, which treats a wide range of bacterial, fungal, and external parasites. Aquarium salt is cheap and safer than a lot of medications, but you do have to be aware of how much salt your specific fish can tolerate. Remember, salt stays in the water and does not evaporate. It can only be diluted with water changes. Increasing temperature is another one. As previously mentioned, this can work in cases like ick. This is another form of non-medicated treatment. I just wanna be sure and inform you that there are other ways of treating certain things before we get into reaching for the fish medicine cabinet. If you're still here with me, congratulations, cause now we're about to go deep down the rabbit hole and you gotta stick with me here because you have to learn this stuff at one point or another in this hobby. Might as well get it over with now with me. Let's talk about the different types of diseases and infections. We have parasitic, bacterial, fungal, and viral. With viral probably being the worst kind, don't worry, I'll explain when we get there. But let's start with parasites. A parasite is an organism that needs a host to survive. And guess what? That host is your fish. They live on or in and leach nutrition from your fish, causing your fish to become weaker, which can then cause secondary disease or infections. You can have internal parasites called endoparasites, like the aforementioned hexameter parasite, and you can have external parasites called ectoparasites, like the aforementioned ick parasites. Both types have a life cycle where they can reproduce and create more parasites. Some internal parasite medication choices can include, but are not limited to, Metroplex, Prozipro, and General Cure. With Metroplex being the most effective, especially when mixed into the food with the addition of Focus and Garlic Guard to attack the parasite directly where it is, inside the gut. Metroplex has little danger of overdosing while also having antibacterial properties. Really? It also treats external parasites like ick and velvet and external worms, since it can also be treated directly in the water column where fish can absorb the meds through the gills as well. Proziquantel is another antiprotozoan and will treat other types of less common tapeworms and flatworms as well as skin and gill flukes and turbillaria. General Cure contains both active ingredients in Metroplex, which is metronidazole, and Prozipro, which is Proziquantel, in one medication but in lower dosages than using the medications on their own. General Cure also treats external parasites like gill and skin flukes. Your external parasite medications can include, but are not limited to, Paragard, Polygard, Ickex, and the already mentioned Metroplex, Prozipro, and General Cure. Paragard is a super safe, broad spectrum, non-antibiotic prophylactic. Wow, that was a mouthful. Paragard is one of the best medications to start with, especially when receiving new fish that show no signs or symptoms of any disease and you don't know what they may or may not have. Because it's safe and mild, it can be used as a preventative to heal any possible cuts or abrasions during shipping and transit to you to avoid any possible secondary infections. Paragard is also effective as a treatment in early stages of ick, velvet, fin rot, bacterial lesions, fungus, external worms, you name it, Paragard got it. Polygard, on the other hand, is very similar to Paragard and treats all the same infections, but this is one of Seachem's strongest medications. Polygard should be used when you're absolutely sure that your fish is infected with something 
but not sure what it is. This is because Polyguard also covers a broad spectrum similar to Paraguard. You can be sure to attack whatever's going on externally on your fish, but follow the instructions precisely and use with caution. This is strong stuff. Hikari's Ick X is one of the most popular Ick medications on the market and can be used to combat Ick. It uses a safe form of Malachite Green, making it easy on your biofilter bacteria and safe to use with invertebrates like loaches and quarries. Cupramine is seeking specific stronger ache and velvet medication, but because it contains copper, cannot be used with invertebrates and plants. Although cupramine is bound by amine, making it less toxic to fish, than other ick medications. You must remove a UV and you cannot mix with other copper-based meds. When it comes to ick, as you see, there are many precautions you need to take when using these stronger meds, which is why I highly recommend using the increased temperature method. Again, the step-by-step -step guide is in my Facebook group files. But don't confuse ick treatment with velvet treatment. Even though the meds for both are similar, you do not want to raise temperatures when treating velvet. Keeping your tank lights off is also very beneficial with velvet infections. Hey, you still with me? We're we're at the seventh inning stretch. Hang in there, guys. Be strong. Let's go. Oh, okay. Now let's move on to bacterial and fungal infections. A great mild medication for bacterial and fungal infections is API's Melafix and Pimafix, with Melafix as an antibacterial and Pimafix as the antifungal. These are not antibiotics and can be used as a safe starting point when seeing symptoms in your fish. They will help in treating fin rot, eye cloud, mouth and body fungus, and the reddening of fins and the body. They can also promote regrowth of damaged fins and tissue. Best when you think a bacterial infection is present but not sure what it is. A step up stronger is API's Furin 2. This contains furin compounds to combat a wide variety of bacterial diseases, including bacterial gill disease, open red sores, body slime and eye cloud, columnaris, and fin and tail rot. Now, Seachem's Canaplex is one hell of a drug. <laughs> it's a strong antibiotic that's easily absorbed through the skin and the gills, treating a broad spectrum of both bacterial and fungal, internal and external infections, highly effective in bacterial infections in which the fish won't eat. But Canaplex can be mixed into the food as well, similar to Metroplex, if preferred to avoid medication affecting invertebrates. Use Canaplex to treat tail and fin rot, Popeye, bacterial lesions, septicemia, bloat, fungus, columnaris, cloudy eye, dropsy, <laughs> it just treats it all. I really wish I could go into each one of these diseases with causes and symptoms, but that would make this like an hour long video and nobody's gonna watch that and this video is already too long as it is. So research the symptoms that your fish is showing and then come back here to find the suitable medications for it. So not finding success with either one of those medications, then try Seachem's Neoplex. Basically equivalent to Canaplex, but a much, much stronger antibiotic medication. Again, follow the directions on the box. This viral infection category is gonna be super quick because meds cannot kill a virus. Just like when we get a cold, a cold is a virus. We get runny nose, sneezing and coughing, and all we can do is treat the symptoms, but our bodies, our immune system, is what has to kill the virus. Same thing for a fish with a viral infection. We can use any of the aforementioned medications to treat the symptoms only, but the fish itself has to eradicate the virus. We can help the fish by keeping them as healthy as possible, and by practicing good preventative measures, what are those? Well, before buying new fish, observe them and look for any physical signs of disease. If you spot any, avoid that entire tank, maybe even that entire store. Quarantine all new fish and treat with the QC, Paraguard and Metroplex, is gonna have you covered without overly medicating the fish. Keep your tank water clean and pristine with low nitrate levels. Keep your temperature consistent, keep your pH consistent, Swings in these two will cause stress that weakens their immune system. Keep an eye out for any aggression in the tank. Getting bullied is gonna stress anyone out. And make sure that your fish are getting proper nutrition from a wide variety of foods. Adding supplements to your food to ensure they get the best nutrition goes a long way as well. What supplements do I speak of? Check that video out right there. And I'll see you on the other side. Peace.